Hey guys, so I did something kind of crazy today, but I think it's going to be exciting. So I'm going to make this really brief, but I think it's important to look at the backstory here. So when the Jeep Wrangler JL came out at the end of 2017, um, I gave it a few months because I knew it was a brand new model. They were ramping up production on a brand new model. So I gave it a few months and then I bought one. We did some really cool things with it. Uh, kind of explored the new JL platform together. You know, put a lift kit on it, added a tow, trailer tow wiring and a receiver hitch. Um, gosh, I can't even remember all the things we did to the new JL. And just uh, kind of explored its off-road capability and the things that you can add to it and what you can do with it. But you guys know I have a trailer that I tow. I have a couple of trailers that I tow actually. And everybody knows that one of the things that the Wrangler's not good at is towing. So then they announced the Jeep Gladiator and I thought, well, that's perfect because it's a truck, it can haul, it can tow, and it's a Jeep, right? So it's like a Swiss army knife, it's perfect. So again, I waited a couple months, let them ramp up production, get all the early bugs worked out. And then I went to the dealer and placed a special order. I got the max tow package because I knew I was gonna be towing. And we did some really cool videos with that one too here on the channel. We uh, hauled at max payload, we towed at maximum or close to the maximum. Um, and that was a, a really cool video because it was one of those silly U-Haul car, what do they call those, auto transport trailers. So those things are designed to put a crazy amount of tongue weight on the truck. And so it did sag the Gladiator, but it still towed really well. And I learned what uh, the limits are on the Gladiator. You know, we lifted it, put 35s on it. We did all kinds of cool stuff, added lights, took it off road, played around with it. So that was a whole lot of fun too. And you know, honestly, the Jeep Gladiator, and I've said this before on this channel, that's uh, out of all the vehicles I've had, and I've had a lot of vehicles, but out of all of them, the Jeep Gladiator was the most enjoyable, funnest, if you can use that word, uh, vehicle that I've ever had. So. I really do kind of miss it. But when that new Gen 3 Eco Diesel engine came out, I've always been a diesel fan and I wanted to try that out, you know, and uh, kind of put it through its paces and see what it was all about. And you couldn't get it in the Jeep at the time. And, and nobody really knew how long it was gonna be before you could get it in the Jeep Gladiator. So I went ahead and got the Ram and uh, it's been a year and a half and we've done some cool things with the Ram too. And, uh, but now I'm really starting to kind of miss the Jeep and uh you know you know here lately because of this trailer that i bought that i'm kind of converting into a toy hauler i briefly considered going up instead of down i was going to go up to a heavy duty truck but the more i thought about it you know i don't really need a heavy duty truck the eco diesel pulls this trailer just fine the trailer has its own brakes so stopping is not a problem um, you know, the only issue is on a really windy day, the half ton frame and chassis, you know, it's, it's really lightweight. So it kind of wanders in the lane a little bit. You kind of have to, you know, pay attention, but it's not dangerous. You just got to slow down and pay attention. But you know, it does fine with this trailer. I don't, and I don't tow it all the time anyway. So I really don't need a heavy duty truck. Heavy duty trucks are heavy, hard to park. It won't fit in the residential garage. They ride rough, they consume fuel, you know, so I don't really need a heavy duty truck. And the truth is, I really just miss my Jeep. So anyway, long story short, the Jeeps are the things that I, that I really love and, and, and they're also the things that made this channel what it is. I mean, this channel, it hasn't blown up by any means, but the subscribers that I do have came during that time when we were doing JL and then JT stuff. And I know a lot of you guys have been telling me, you're gonna miss that Jeep. And you're right, I have kind of missed it. So anyway, that's a roundabout way of saying that I. I'm gonna try and get another one. Uh, this time around, I've decided that I'm not gonna wait to see what the details are on that new 4xE platform. I don't see how they can possibly build a 4xE version of the truck. It works okay in the Wrangler, but I don't see how they can do it in the truck and maintain respectable towing and payload numbers. I just don't see how the math is gonna work out on that. They might surprise me, but I just don't see how they're gonna do it. So. I'm going to go with the diesel because I already know the eco diesel can pull uh, anything I want to hook to it. It gets good fuel economy. You know, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. I know my way around it. 
know what to expect with it. It's not something newfangled, you know, some newfangled technology. So I feel more comfortable with the diesel. So today uh, there's a reputable dealer not too far from here down in Tennessee, thanks to the guys on the Jeep Gladiator forum uh, for letting me know about these guys. So I've been emailing back and forth with them. They worked me up a deal and uh, I think it might happen. I'm gonna go ahead and place an order for a new one and uh, hopefully six, seven weeks it should be here and we can start having some more fun with the Jeep again. So here's the way I decided to go this time. In the last 12 months or so, Jeep has done with the Gladiator what they've unfortunately done with a lot of the vehicles in their brand. Even, even some Dodge uh, vehicles are this way where they have 50 million trim levels to pick from. And you can get, especially if you're new to them, you can get so far down in the weeds trying to figure out the differences between the trim levels that it will just drive you crazy and you just want to give up. So I had to pour through all these new trim levels. You know, when I ordered my first Gladiator, they had Sport, Sport S, Overland, Rubicon. That was it, pretty simple, you know? So now you've got the Willis, the Willis Sport, the 80th anniversary edition, uh, Freedom Edition, Overland, Rubicon, Mojave, High Altitude. I mean, it's like there's a million different ones. It's like Baskin Robbins. So I had to go through all of those um, lists, looking at what they had, what they didn't have. In the end, I kind of decided on an Overland, and you're going to laugh at me if you've been a subscriber for a while, because a couple years ago, the Overland, in my view, was like the black sheep. That was like the one trim level that did not belong. I mean, it had none of the off-road chops of the Rubicon. It couldn't work as hard as the Sport, and uh, it just it didn't have any options that you couldn't get on another trim level. I mean, there just there seemed to be no point to it, but. Now, the way they've reconfigured all the packages and all the trim levels and everything, and especially when you add the diesel engine, it really changes a lot. So the diesel Overland actually has pretty respectable payload numbers, pretty respectable towing numbers. Um, there's a lot of things about it that actually aren't so bad, and the price has, relative to the other trims, the price has come down now. So I ended up going with the Overland. It worked out the best for me. Uh, the other thing was some of the trim levels, even though they show them on the Jeep build configurator, when the dealership tried to build them, it wouldn't let them do it. So I'm thinking that now that we're getting close to the end of this model year, Jeep is already trying to kind of shut off certain combinations in the order system. So anyway, long story short, the Overland is the one I went with. It worked out the best for me. Um, and we added some, uh, pretty basic options to it. I got the 8.4 inch screen with the premium audio, spray in bed liner, uh, the LED lights. Let's see, what else did we add to it? Um, the hard top, because it does get pretty cold in the winter time around here. The cold weather package, because I love the heated steering wheel. You guys know it's one of my favorite things. I love that heated steering wheel. The heated seats are cool too. Uh, this time I went for the, uh, what they call proximity entry. They used to call it something different for a long, long time. That was a whole, we could do a whole video on that. Um, they changed the, I can't remember what it was called. Keyless enter and go. That's what it used to be called, keyless enter and go. That was the common name on that feature across every vehicle under the FCA umbrella. And then when the Wrangler JL came out, they changed it and they made it to where that name was used on a different feature and it almost caused some lawsuits. I mean, it was a big deal. But anyway, I went for that this time because I think that is a pretty neat feature where you can just leave the key in your pocket, walk up and grab the handle, open the door. You guys have seen this stuff before. So just, I went down through there. I didn't add everything. I didn't add the safety packages and stuff because I don't care about that kind of thing. I basically just made it to where it's functional, you know, and uh, in the winter time, a little bit more comfortable. So I'll show you the build sheet and you can kind of see, you know, what I put on there and where the price came up to. Uh, this particular dealer went well below invoice, so it was a pretty good deal. Uh, sent them a deposit today. Hopefully it's gonna be, I don't know, six weeks maybe. Uh, you know, with everything going on right now the way it is, it's just, it's crazy. You don't know how long it's gonna take, but obviously I'll keep you updated and I can't wait to show you because I think this is gonna be a pretty neat project here. Um, you know, I know some other guys have towed with the Gladiator and with the Gladiator diesel. 
I don't know if they've towed the way that we're going to tow with it. <laughs> so this is going to be cool. We're going to we're going to put this truck to its uh to its limit on road. We're going to do some off road stuff too, but it is a truck after all. So we're going to put it to the work, uh, put it to its limit for working out on the road as well. So it's going to be cool. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to fill you in on that. You know, I, I'm a Jeep guy. I think it's going to be cool, and I hope you guys think it's going to be cool too. Can't wait.